Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight for the 19th annual Filmed by Bike Film Festival. All week long, we're running a series of free festival, pre-festival events to get you excited for this weekend's movies. I'm Aileen Crotty. I'm the founder and festival director of Film by Bike. Now, this year's collections of films is just outstanding. You can get tickets at filmbybike.org. One of the films that we're most excited about is a film entitled Freedom Seat. It tells the story of the journey of Naresh Kumar as he journeys from India to Germany on a tandem bike to raise awareness for modern day slavery. So tonight we're excited to have joining us on the program, Naresh and the director, Linus herbig Matten to talk more about this incredible film. So thank you so much, Naresh and Linus. It's great to have you two here tonight to join us. Hey, I mean, thank you so much Hi. for having us. It's so good to be in the show. Thank you. Now, before we get started, I do want to acknowledge that Naresh, you're in India, and I know you're suffering from COVID. This cannot be an easy time for you. How are things going for you? Um, it's pretty difficult, as the international media has seen for the last few weeks. There's a huge COVID surge and lots of people affected, including me and my family. Uh, very difficult time. So yeah, just um, going on, hanging in there, just getting there one day at a time. That's great. Well, I appreciate you joining. You know, I know it's early there. And Linus, I know for you, it's middle of the night in Germany. So I appreciate you joining as well. Uh, to kick things off, I'd love to hear from you a little bit, Naresh, about what the Freedom Seat Project is all about. Um, great question. You know, freedom is the highest form of uh, living, especially for a kid like me who grew up in a suburb in Chennai, South India. Uh, freedom is a huge word, freedom to do whatever you want to do, go anywhere. But um, also at the same time, it's um, one of the most uh, biggest atrocity being committed in the world as well, how a human cannot be free these days. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, being my own, um, uh, raising up in a place where it's so poor and how freedom was a big thing. You know, if you think about um, law enforcement, right, if you commit a crime, what do you do? You know, no matter how big the fines are, they eventually lock you up. Of course, you get food, clothes and shelter in the prison. But still, the one precious thing that take it away from you is your freedom. But when we think about it, there's like so many people in the world, like 40 million people, majority of them being women and children who don't have that very freedom, bonded in slavery of all kinds. So that became like a huge issue and a cause for me. And I just wanted to make it a part of uh, my life journey to live a life bigger than myself. So yeah, that's um, a product of how Freedom Seed happened. And how did the project come together? Where did you get started? Um, in the Alaskan mountains, I was at a friend's wedding and um, I'm very curious in terms of like, you know, talking to people. So I was talking to my friend's uncle and he was talking about this nice project. It's called uh, Take a Seat. Uh, he would take his uh, tandem bike to a random uh, street corner, and then he would invite his local people to join him. So he would pick up the local milkman, grocery man, the oldest teacher living in the county, and he puts the camera, and he just takes him for a spin and says, take a seat. Tell me, who are you, and what's the story? So it sounded an amazing idea. Until then, I was running extreme long distance to raise funds and awareness, but I loved this idea. So I went back to Tennessee at that time, and I saw this guy riding a tandem. I know what it is like to sit in the front, but not sit in the back as a stoker, they call it. So I was sitting in the back, and Ellen, it was terrifying, right? You give away your complete control. Right. All of a sudden, someone else is controlling the bike. And I don't know, it was like the boiler moment, you know, it was like the metaphor. Uh, how it was fun, but also so difficult to let go of your freedom where you can't steer, where you can't hit the brakes. And that metaphor came to that human trafficking part as well, how you you don't want to lose that complete freedom. And yeah, I mean, that was the moment. And then um, went to New Zealand and decided to do as an experiment how this project is going to work out, which turned out to be a Freedom Seat uh, New Zealand adventure. 
Wow, that's incredible. So tell us about the journey that you took that is profiled in the film Freedom Seat when you left India and rode that tandem bike all the way to Germany. The journey always starts with a lot of questions, right? I mean, uh, you're filled with so many doubts. Like I said, when I was going to New Zealand to do this, I even told my charity partner saying, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to ride from top to bottom of uh, New Zealand, picking random strangers. And it's so funny, you know, the first reaction you get is like hysterical laughter. Not that they were being racist, but they're like, oh, look at you, homeless looking guy, long hair, and used to have like big beard no one is going to join you on this adventure you know we'll be glad if no one called the cops on you we are scared anything is going to happen but then they're like you know you want to take a chance in humanity and just go out and you know see what's going to happen that's all you can do and that turned out to be an amazing adventure we ended up raising like over 200 percent than what we wanted to raise um took me 33 days to bike across new zealand and you will not believe this I didn't spend a dollar for accommodation, not intentionally, but every single day, the kindness and the love and respect from people were just insane. Um, following that adventure, I was traveling in India a lot, speaking in Rotary clubs and other events when um, you always need to be surrounded by people who can put in these crazy, insane ideas in your head. Um, that's how amazing adventures come through. So I. I heard this guy, he's an old Rotarian guy. He said, oh, we have a big mission going on in Germany where 40,000 delegates, uh, Rotarians from all over the world, are they going to join? So you should go on a bigot expedition. You should ride from India to Germany, carrying the message, end uh, slavery now, because uh, Rotary was uh, instrumental in stopping polio worldwide with the mission, end polio now. And uh, yeah, that was just like an inception, you know, one dream, a seed that was put in this head by this um, amazing gentleman. And then Freedom Seed India started. Same thing, right? I mean, New Zealand was different because English speaking country, you're riding across, you're given, you have an opportunity to explain your story in a language that people can understand. Unlike India, to Germany, where crossing across 14 countries, India alone speaks like what? millions of languages and I spoke only three to get through. But um, the biggest lesson for India to Germany was language is never a barrier for human connection. Yeah. And there's something really powerful. Um, we were talking to uh, some other folks pre-festival interviews and they were talking about the, the power of bicycle adventure in that somebody sees you and they immediately know you are on a journey because you are on a bicycle out there in the world. And I can only imagine that must have just drawn people to you. I've experienced that when I've been on bicycle journeys as well. And the ability to connect with people is vastly different than any other form of travel because they see you, they see your gear, and they're just instantly so curious. Yeah, I think it's just that, uh, that human powered movement attracts uh, a lot of um... It, it just attracts you, you know, be it running or cycling or hiking. There's something about it when during, you are on that human movement, that inertia, when it gets you uh, going. But also in my case, it's an amazing thing because a lot of uh, people stop because of curiosity. So when they see a fully loaded bike, which is attractive enough by itself, they want to know what happened to the passenger who's not sitting in the backseat. <laughs> What happened to the girlfriend? Did she break up? Or was that your friend who just left you right in the middle of an expedition? You are this poor soul who must, have be, who must be riding his bicycle with a broken heart because the girl walked away. So I didn't even have to go and ask anyone to join me on this expedition. Um, most of the time, it'll be couples going in a car and they just want to pull over to ask, what's the story? Why is the seat empty? And then you just give them a very humble invitation. You know, you're like, I'll tell you all about it. But also you accept your vulnerability and your weakness. You're saying, I'm going 9,000 kilometers across four, two continents. And I'm really tired, but I'm doing this for a mission. Get, I mean, I don't need your time. I don't need your money. I just need a little bit of your physical energy. Can you just sit and paddle with me and join me in this mission? And you explain that. And, you know, seldom people deny. They just like jump in the bike and they sit there they give the keys to the wife and then um ride 10 kilometers 20 kilometers and the wife takes a turn and 
most of the day the ride would just end at their house and you end up staying at their house the rest of the day wow. so yeah you end up meeting like a lot of interesting people but anytime you see a blinker turned on in front of you or if someone is honking you know someone wants to ride with you <laughs> <laughs> it must be so interesting to be on a journey like that where you just you don't know where the day is going to go. You're following the whim of the people that you meet along the way. And that's so different than our daily lives that are structured and have these f times we need to be places and accomplishments we're trying to achieve that are very rigid. Um, what was that like to just go with the flow of the folks that you met along the way and the experiences that you had day to day? Um, one word would be just magic. Yeah. It, it was like, I was watching a Hollywood movie where every scene is unfolding and I'm the lead actor there and could people come in and go. And every single time you think, this is it. This is the ultimate amazing experience I would ever experience in my whole life. And within five minutes, there will be something else waiting for you around the corner. And you're like, wait a second, this is not happening. No one is going to believe me if I tell these stories to anyone. But um, it was just fascinating. And that was the key also, right? The uncertainty was the amazing magic portion of this entire trip. Um, I've never made plans to where I'm going to pitch a tent or where I'm going to sleep, nothing. You don't know what's uh, ahead of you. So just take one day at a time, uh, meet people. Of course, I, I had a deadline to get to Germany because I wanted to be there at the starting day of the conference. But at the same time, I didn't want to dilute it by pushing way too fast. I just wanted to enjoy people, meet them. And um, yeah, it was just a pure magical experience everywhere, be it India, uh, getting into Oman and Iran and all the other countries. Um, also, my travel had some problems with the visas because of uh, uh, issues with India, Pakistan, and the visa difficulties that we go through. So the logistics were a challenge by itself, but people made the journey so beautiful. Well, it's certainly interesting to hear about the journey. It's a whole other thing to experience it through the film Freedom Ride, which we will be debuting or sh showcasing at Filmed by Bike. The film Freedom Ride is showing in our Triumph program, which is coming up on Sunday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. You can get tickets at filmedbybike.org. So Linus, I'm so curious to hear from you how you got connected up with Naresh and how this film came together. Um, oh, so Naresh and I met a couple of years back in New Zealand um, when we were hiking with me about um, this journey, how he ran around across New Zealand in sandals and uh, as a filmmaker, I was intrigued and we made the film The Man in Sandals together. And um, yeah, we just kept connected through all this time. And I, I knew about Freedom Seat New Zealand. I wasn't there at the time. So I wasn't be able to, to document it in any way. If I would have been there, I, I would have made a movie of, out of that as well. Um, and then he told me about his next journey, which was going to be from from India to Germany, and as me being in Germany, I thought that's that's the perfect way to make the second movie with him. Um, and and it was just literally how to figure out how to make a movie without a budget that's highly depending on on the journey and um, on a trip that is easy to do with a bike, and but it's not even that easy to just stick along in a car or any other way of transportation. So um, we were highly depending on Naresh getting as much footage as he can um, on the go and um, with his iPhone. And we had other um, filmmakers in India joining him um, on the way. And, and I was just there at the end, basically, to, to pick him up and, and get him to the finish line, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. And what was that like along the way? Were you following along with where Naresh was and how things were going in the other areas? Or was it just sort of a surprise when he came and you got a chance to see the footage that he had gathered along the way? I think we basically texted like nearly daily, maybe not daily, but very, very often. I got a, a huge load of iPhone footage pre-hand before we met up for filming and before he, he came to Europe. 
Um, so I was I was very much in the loop of everything that was going on because Naresh also did with another company in India some sort of um, you know, like social media interest in, in the whole story, sharing stories and sharing videos. So we always kept kept in touch and I had a lot of footage before we even before we even met. And at any point, were you one of the folks who jumped on the back of the tandem? Again, excuse me, I didn't see, I were, didn't hear. Were you one of the people who jumped on the back of the uh, tandem at any point? Of course. I mean, I, I didn't, not, not like a, a passenger, but just when you go from A to B at some point, even if when you're in a city, you just take the tandem because that's, that's the way of transportation. But I think there was one part where where we got back to to the place where we were sleeping and I was on the back and I felt very trapped. Like Naresh just said earlier, it's a very, very different feeling. And as a filmmaker, when you're doing a documentary, you always sort of feel like you're in control of things. And <laughs> it was really interesting to get let it all go, letting Naresh do this thing. What would the two of you say were some of the most surprising moments, either in the process for you, Linus, the process of documenting and telling this story, and for you, Naresh, in the journey that you took? What were some of your most, uh, what surprised you the most about that adventure? Um, I'll go first. Um, definitely vulnerability is the key to human connection, I mean, um, the biggest surprise factor, even as like a guy who traveled and who have seen a lot of places, uh, language was definitely a huge uh, worrisome thing for me with a lot of these cultures that I was going to go through. How is it going to be if I was going to raise enough funds, if I going to meet a lot of people? But um, that that completely changed from day one of starting uh, Freedom Seat. Uh, and so many amazing uh, human experiences, I would say, in places that I would never expect. I mean, I owe so many my gratitude to so many people who made this happen. If not for them, Freedom Seat would not have happened, um, like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so definitely the human part, you know, as you know, when you go on a human uh, powered expedition, amazing experiences. And how about for you, Linus? So for me, I think, yeah, when filming Freedom Sea, what 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 surprised you the most? I think it was the the reaction that people had on Naresh mm -hmm. when when meeting, um, and there's so many different. For the for, it was really you know, there's a stranger talking to people he never met and who never met him, and, and they're just instantly hooked to what he's he was saying. But it wasn't just just um, Naresh going to meet strangers when we were in Vienna that was where my sister was living at the time so we stayed at her place and um, I remember she was really curious but also not really um, you know weirded out by a guy who's cycling from India to Germany living on the road she wasn't really knowing what to expect and, and Naresh and I walked into the into the flat and they were instantly taken by him and and his and his appearance and everybody loved him and and i think that's just the impact that he has on people and that's why this whole journey and whole whole um, experience of freedom seat is possible because of of him it's just him on a bike and that's what makes it so so human and so amazing it's such a simple it's, concept it's that connection. but not it is yeah i love that that's just beautiful well, if you're tuning in live here on YouTube, we've got the chat window over on the side. Feel free to pipe in with any questions you have for our guests today. Naresh Kumar, the writer, and Lion, Linus herbig Matten, the filmmaker behind Freedom Seat, which plays in our Triumph program coming up Sunday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. We've got tickets available at filmedbybike.org. I'd love to hear from you, Naresh, a little bit more about where the funds have gone and how this project has made a difference? Um, great question. Uh, when we started this adventure, the goal was to help uh, bonded labor, uh, people trapped in bonded labor slavery in South India. So I made ties with uh, a charity organization that entirely focuses on the rescue and the rehabilitation of uh, the victims of bonded labor slavery. Um, India is one of the 
worst countries affected by bond labor slavery due to like weak legal laws around it. And um, so these are a bunch of people that were already rescued, but who are in the process of getting their identity. They didn't even have an identification card. There was no evidence that they were even born in a country like India. Uh, just because the father owed some money to some big landlord and that he couldn't pay back, the debt fell on the family and they've been trapped in the brick factories and in the agricultural lands, toiling their life away for generations. So even when you rescue them, they don't even know when they were born, no forms of identity, nothing. So it was like really important for me to work at a grassroots level so our funds can go directly to help in getting just identity, you know, they can be a human again in a society and can be rehabilitated inside. So we our, our goal was to uh, raise some funds and uh, give some kind of sustainable income and livelihood for them. So that's what I focused on. So it was called RBLA, Release Bonded Laborers uh, Association. In fact, it's an it's a cool organization where it's like started by the slaves for the slaves kind of a thing. So we wanted to empower them and make them as leaders because they know how to rescue their own people. What are the tricks involved? Where are they? And also empower them with the legal stuff so they can be the voice and we can support them. So following the completion of the mission, we ended up raising over $15,000 and uh, the entire funds went into uh, their account, which helped in building sustainable housing, a lot of uh, training for job employments, and of course, food, clothes and shelter, especially now with the raging pandemic, even with people, well-to-do people are struggling with jobs and economy. Uh, they have they had nothing to start with in the first place. So especially now the funds are going to like a great use for them to live a sustainable, decent life and also not to not get trapped into the same uh, bonded labor slavery situation that they escaped from. Because like I said, you know, it's a raging pandemic and there are a lot of uh, vultures out there trying to prey on the most uh, vulnerable people. It's just tragic to think about that. It's already such a challenging time and then for to have that predatory aspect as well. It's just atrocious. Right. So, so Linus, for you as a filmmaker, is this the typical type of work that you work on? Or tell us a little bit more about some of your previous work and where your passion lies as a filmmaker. Um, no, I actually come from the drama perspective. I've, I used to, I'm, I'm, I'm a writer, script writer. I do commercials as a director. And the only documentary work I've done is with Naresh, uh, honestly. So um, I feel like in, in the end, it's just about telling a story. And I think that the way to tell the stories that you have to tell when you meet Naresh, it's, it has to be a documentary because otherwise you wouldn't believe what, what this guy is doing. And so that's, that's the, the way I chose to, to portray that. But I'm doing it. I'm not usually a documentary filmmaker. So where, what is the status of the Freedom Seat project now? Um, where are you, are you headed anywhere next? Do you have any plans for another adventure? Yeah, a lot. After definitely the success of uh, Freedom Seat India and Germany, um, I had like so many Freedom Seats planned around the world. One was to uh, ride across uh, America in collaboration with uh, Rotary Club there. And uh, in fact, in April last year, I was going to dip my wheel in Huntington Beach and ride all the way to the White House. Wow. And Freedom Seat USA was in the planning. Uh, April 1st, 2020 was uh, my ride planned for. In fact, my tandem is sitting right now in uh, uh, Huntington Beach, California. But, um, you know, life just turned upside down. My flight was going to be on the 25th of March and 23rd, India shut down the borders. And I got stuck here for eight months and um, I'm still here. I got back and I'm still stuck here. Um, but yeah, Freedom Seed USA and a couple more expeditions is definitely in the planning. But there's a big question mark hanging above the head like as to when that is going to be. Yeah. What do the two of you hope the viewers will take away from watching your film coming up on Sunday night? Oof. You want to go first? Should I go first? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, I, I really, I really, I really hope that they um, get a feeling of, of, 
of traveling with Naresh for a short moment, uh, just being being um, a part of this journey for 25 minutes. That's what I really hope the people can you know can experience and just um, know why he's doing this and getting in all these emotions that he's he's feeling on the journey. So just every audience is a little bit a part of the of the whole journey. That's what I hope for. And Naresh, how about for you? Um, I would say two things. Uh, one would be, I know it's cliche, everyone throws around these days, but uh, the, as much as I told about the power of vulnerability, the power of kindness is huge. Um, so it doesn't matter. I know we are all going through some tough times, but being kind to one another, even in the, the smallest acts of kindness goes like a long, long way, which you will see in the film. Uh, one experience was my experience in Turkey where I was stuck in the middle of nowhere with no hopes. You know, I mean, I don't know what would have happened to me if that old gentleman would not have come and helped, but no language, nothing. He just took me home. I was covered in mud and dirt and sweat and tears. No one was going to even say hello to me, but the tiny hut, he made my bed and like, you know, he, I, I felt like I was in a vacation at my grandpa's place listening to all the snowstorms outside. I was like, I should be out there right now. Yet here I am, tummy full of like Turkish tea and good food, like nicely, you know, snuggled up. The only thing he didn't do was kiss me in my, you know, for, for my forehead and say good night. Woke me up in the morning. And the next day he rode the bike with me because it's a village. I didn't know where I was following him that night before. And he was just standing there waving his hand until I disappeared from his eyes. Every time I would turn back, he was just standing there. I don't know, it just makes you think, you know, what kind of kindness is this? Why would you do something like this? Especially now in a society where you do something to someone expecting something back, but there are so many awesome people out there. Like 140 people helped me on this adventure. And um, I can go on with so many kindness stories. And that's when it makes you and changes you as a person. It could be as small as a, sm a simple smile at some grocery guy and say, how are you doing? or offering a cold bottle of water to someone. It goes a long way. So especially now, empathy and kindness is so important to be there and help each other to get through this really bad phase of life. And the other thing I would like to focus on is the charity aspect. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything like you know human trafficking or anything, but I think we are all empowered and capable of doing something for the other person. So whatever your cost is, whatever, wherever your heart is, um, reading is important, research is important, but the most important thing is doing it. That'll have an impact in the tiniest possible way in some human's life that can change them completely. So um, I would say like, you know, take up a cause, or if you really want to join hands with me, go to Freedom Seat and uh, we can really be partners and hopefully some of the viewers one day can ride the bike with me across America. Um, in fact, my bike's name is Kindness, and I call this journey a journey on kindness, and it's also fueled by kindness and lots of peanut butter. <laughs> so, yeah, people can jump on the bike, kindness with me, and we can ride kindness together. That's so great. Well, Naresh and Linus, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I can't wait to share your film with our global audience coming up this Sunday. Again, that's May 23rd at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can get tickets at filmbybike.org. I really appreciate the two of you joining us early in the middle of the night, Linus, and you, Naresh, I know you're suffering from COVID, so we're wishing you, we're, we're thinking of you and wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for having us. us. It's a real honor to be, you know, made the official selection in your very prestigious film festival. Thank you so much. Thank really you appreciate for being, it. Yeah, thank you. So tonight we've been speaking with Naresh Kumar and Linus Herbig Matin of the film Freedom Seat. I recommend following along what the three, what the two of them are doing on Instagram. You can find Freedom Seat as well as Naresh's Instagram and Linus's Instagram as well. It's a great opportunity to follow along with the Freedom Seat project. Now stay tuned all week long. We have other interviews coming up. You can always watch these live or later. So use that link up above and share that with a friend and make sure you like and subscribe down below so you can find out more about what we have going on at the festival. We look forward to seeing you all this weekend.
for the 19th annual Filmed by Bike Film Festival. We're kicking things off on Thursday with a happy hour where we will be talking a little bit more about the behind the scenes process of how these incredible films were chosen. So we hope to see you there. Thanks so much.